Hey everybody, welcome back to our show this week. You know what, there's always chores to do around the Smith Farm here, and I gotta go feed all my birds. I got chickens in here, got peacocks and ducks and geese and all sorts of other things. I'm in, there's no doubt that farming is a huge thing for us, you know, and I love being outdoors. And you know what, there's always work to do. That's the big thing. Hey, we're gonna go and do some steelhead fishing this week with our good friend, Jeff Vandermorrow, and his buddy Austin, you know, and what is Austin's last name? Radagotsky. Oh, Radagotsky? And Austin from Blue Ribbon Outdoors, you know what, these two are some of the most knowledgeable guys in the business. But before that, I gotta do my chores, I'm gonna feed my birds, and we're out of here. Hey, I'll tell you what, everybody, we are gonna be doing a little steelhead fishing. If you remember last year, we had an incredible time. We were with Austin from Blue Ribbon Outdoors. Today joining us is his friend and our friend, Jeff Vandermorrell. These are two of the most knowledgeable guys I know in the industry when it comes to fishing and hunting. No doubt, let's go down and meet him. Oh, like Austin, you know, we sat on the other side there yesterday, had about seven bites in 10 minutes. Didn't have to stand in the water, and Austin's like, you know what we should do tomorrow? We should go stand in the water. Yeah. Austin, don't your waders leak? It makes oh, better, yeah. It makes better oh. TV. Yeah, when your waders leak. Right. Yeah. Hey, I don't know if you guys uh, mind this at all, but I would like to do a little competition today. Oh, boy. Between what are, what you two. The terms? the terms are, well, who catches the most fish, obviously. Not, I'm not in this because I know what'll happen. You guys will snub me out and I won't catch one all day long. So we're talking, but I, if you guys are in that bit, and the winner of it gets a new charred deep fryer that's in my truck. If you're up for that challenge. South coast, north coast. South coast, north coast. Right? Yeah. Are you guys, you guys game for it? Yeah. A, a brand new deep fryer. I'm sure each one of you guys could use a deep fryer, right? Oh, I'm at a little disadvantage. I didn't bring my hardware rod. Hey, don't, we don't want to hear it. Full Take access? Oh. oh, so look how nice. Yep. Austin is, right? And, and a hardware rad when needed. Okay. See, I mean, like, so, I mean, that's friendly competition, no, Mr. Vandermore. Yeah, that's friendly. Oh, I like friendly competition. Yep. I like it. We'll have to maybe do a redux next year. We'll go north and we'll do our. We'll okay. Do that one, yeah. I'd like to hear that. Okay. Oh, You're all in? You're good with it? It's Let's a real do it. Thing. Let's do it. All right. Just remember, I if I, I'm happy. Here you guys, we're teamed up. We're, we're we're all scheming how to get you as many fish as possible. No, then he well, comes and divides the family. Right, divides comes and divides. Yeah. Well, Larry, see you later. I'm gonna go on the other side over there. You can film me from a distance. Right. Well, game on, boys. Coasties. Let's, Let's get, do it. Let's do it. You guys, I have a new true love. Not J Lo. Called an airboat. What do you think there, Austin? I think, Talk to us. I think I'm winning right now. Well, no, I haven't touched it. Thanks for the brown schnauz. Mr. Seifer Ellen. Seifer. Well, cold morning, nice way to start. Now, Austin, is that a buck? Yeah. How can you tell? Usually because of the weight is. <laughs> <laughs> but you can neat. tell all of our sea frelons, if a, any brown trout you catch has an adipose clip, it is a sea frelon. And that's a species of trout, it, It's a, just a different genetic strain of brown trout, yeah. which is all we're stocking now. There is still some remnant. Uh, most people refer to them as German browns. It was called the wild rose strain of browns. And there is still a few remnant <coughs> dinosaurs left, but almost 90% or more now are sea frillings. And you'll see sometimes they'll vary on which fins are clipped down here. It's most of this. A little further north, you'll get like what's an ALP clip that'd be adipose left pectoral. This one's just the adipose left pectoral. First blood, baby. I just finished up my shift on babysitting duty. Now it's my turn to fish. Got a couple tangled up spinners, a couple, uh, couple of mishaps, but overall, pretty good start to the day here. We're pecking away at them. Didn't Larry hook you with the spinner? Uh, we had a little mishap on that, yeah, but uh, kind of my fault. I was using a zone and I was, uh, I was, uh, well, no, he didn't hook me, he just hooked my line and he's a long rod, so it's, uh, it's all right, it happens. 
Good tip, you know, using a depth finder like this to check depth really helps out. You can run it across. Here it's a pretty uniform run, but if you're unsure of a depth or especially with water changes or if you get a sesh if you're closer to the lake, you know, casting it out there, you can drag it across. Obviously you want to be careful for snags, but lifting up your float like so, checking right there. I know I'm about three inches down, about three inches down. So I know that it, as I'm running with this, I'm running a jig, that that's going to be ticking real close to the bottom. I'd rather be up about six, eight inches, so I'm going to move it up just a touch. I'd rather move the float down, raise the jig up. Now I'm set to fish this stretch. Hey, hey, you didn't, Austin didn't tell you he's getting inside I information. Have advantage. Casey called me. Inside like, oh, information, God. right? <laughs> hey, I played a win, I'm dirty, bro. Right? I'm... That is so cool. You know, you said it just takes a little bit of time, and then you did dial some things in here, too. I had, I had a little bit of a. Nice. Now let's tell everybody what you did different. So we were running eggs, spawn sacks. We we're getting a few bites, but um, not as many as we should be for how many fish we knew were here. So just changed up and uh, started running tandem bead rig and first drift. Oops. Streamside MREs when you lose your spoon from our show a couple weeks ago. Mm. I guess I've been munching on them too. I had the Polish, the Polish smoked up a nice pile, and uh, I have not had any from Leroy yet, but it looks Probably fantastic. As soon as my fingers start working, I will definitely do that. The issue is that it's break time. We had uh, a little bit of snow last night, cooled that water down a little bit, and uh, the trout are a little pouty as Mr. Vandermortel says, pouty, pout, pout. So we're just giving them a little bit of a break, taking a break ourselves, and which is okay, and uh, having a little snack, which my snacks are up in the truck. I was hoping you would say, oh, I'm hungry too, I'll go get them. Oh, I thought Austin was gonna let you have that rat. Uh, I didn't want the rat. It. The rat, no. I'll cook it with a lighter. No. Never take a man's rat. Austin, you got me hooked up because I'll tell you what, you said slow it down, slow it down. I was reeling too fast. And Austin said, hey, you gotta slow it down a little bit. Now that's a real soft rat. Yep. So don't be afraid to use it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. Use all the best. Ooh, that is a great feeling. I'll tell you what, started off a little slow this morning. We got some snow last night, cooled the water back down. But Austin said, and so does they're both, Jeff said, just hang on, it's gonna go, it's gonna go. And I just missed one a little bit before this. This feels like a really good fish. You think you got that one that's been on you? I think so. I, he kept coming up. Kept coming up. There he is. Oh, oh it's a nice fish. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, I'll tell you, it's a nice fish. I'm loving this. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Baby. Woo. Loving it. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. He wasn't going anywhere. No, he. Yeah, you had me all nervous about hooking that log with that spinner, right? And bending the, bending the <laughs> hook. That is a nice fish, too. You know, and it is amazing, like you're saying, that there's so many fish in these rivers, you know? And when you, is that typical when you get snow and it cools that water down and it's a little tougher in the morning? I mean, earlier in the year, when the water's just more consistently cold, yep. it's not as big of a deal as when it's been warming up for a week and then now we got a big change. Okay, yep. So it's not so much the temperature itself it's as much as the drop in temperature. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. And, and then, you're calling, I always say it's a hook, but you're calling that a kite. Yep. Okay. So the correct like trout term for a, a hook jaw on a spotting trout would be a kite. Okay. That's the cool part. You know, we talk about this all the time, everybody. The cool part about like the experiences that we get to do with the show here and is that I'm learning. I know hardly anything about this kind of fishing. I learned a little bit last year from Austin and uh, you know, 
again, that's the cool part. And we're trying to, you know, teach people exactly so you guys can come down here and do the same thing. Like we'll notice in a spring, um, like a fish with like specific markings. It's okay. not uncommon for us to catch the same fish a couple times in a season. Oh, that's pretty so, cool. So if, when you do let them go, there is a shot of catching, catching them, again. them again. Yep. Yeah, it's very cool. So All you're right. just doing your buddies a favor when you put them back. Let's let this one go. Out of there. Woo! All right. Game on. Again, is that on a spinner too? Uh, nope, this is on a on a plug, a hot and tot. Oh, a hot and tot. Yep. Oh, you switched up on me, huh? Something a little different for him. Wow. Are you thinking steelhead or brown trout? I'm gonna. It's fighting like a brown. Okay. Can't believe you can tell how they fight. They're well, different. usually with a bigger rainbow, they're gonna make a tear on you. Okay. You know, or, or get airborne. You know, we've been seeing quite a few rainbows coming up. I mean, that surface. that one we kept seeing roll looked like a really nice bow. Single fish you catch on these has them and they're hooked just like this. They have it T-boned every time. Why do you think that is? Because I, I, they're not. I don't think they're eating it as a food source. They're killing. They're, they're killing it. Like get out of my face! I'm killing it. Okay. And but even the the steelhead will eat these plugs too, and they always have it. It's the very rare way. that they're not T-boned T -boned like that. What's this second butthole in between his vent fins? Now this is something you only see. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? This is something you only see in certain rivers. <laughs> it's actually not a second butthole. For those of you who are musky fishermen, this is what we would call ABT, advanced butthole technology. Um, buttholes on baits are known to attract larger fish and more fish in general in the musky world. This is actually the faux butthole. It's actually part of the fin. And when you move it, see, it's not actually its not actually a second butthole. But they've developed this to throw off predators. Oh. Evolution's crazy. It's unreal. Oh, Isn't that neat? That's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Dial. Yeah. You're kind of down. Aren't you, you down know, three I, zip? You know, it's, uh, I knew leaving the hardware rod at home was going to hurt me. That's a tough pill to swallow, but it's okay. We're catching fish. Yeah, we've been getting some action on a variety of stuff here. Tree branches, grass, all sorts of low-hanging things. Bringing up some shrimp, running some on plain hooks. We've been running some on jigs, been running beads, been running bags, been running combos. A little bit of everything. There's a fair amount of fish around, but they're pretty pressured. They've been hooked quite a bit. Pretty much everything we've we've uh, we've hooked today and caught and landed has been something that's you know had some previous angling pressure. So these fish have been in the system a long time. They've seen kind of all the tricks. So a lot of mixing and matching. I've been unable to keep a lot of my fish pinned here, but. You know, shrimp is a good way to mix it up. You know, you can use wax worms. You know, like I said, again, the plain beads. We had fish on blades today. We got fish on crankbaits. Larry's eating the shrimp. Huh? Larry, are you familiar with botulism? Huh? <laughs> oh, God. How do they taste? They're pretty good. This, you didn't bring this for us to eat? <laughs> what do you guys like? So I love them. Wait, we, we eat the fish eat, right? What are you guys laughing at? Nothing wrong with sampling the bait. This is bait? I thought it said pick and save it. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah. How's it go? I saw a beautiful girl jogging on the bank. Only if I was a cool dude like old Hank. I truly think that it's still gonna light up pretty good because it's definitely getting warmer and warmer. You're starting to see the snow go away. In that water temperature, if we would just get a little bit of sun, I'll guarantee it'd be game on. But I'm still excited about being out. Flooded? Yeah, I mean, it just, to me, makes total sense. 
came on. That didn't take long. Oh, that's a that's a nice fish. Nice brow, nice winter fish. Beat up female, been in the river all winter most likely. She's played games. Yeah, we'll get her right back. She's good. This is what it's all about, you guys. Getting outside. Spring is here. Well, I'll tell you what, Austin, when you called the other day and said, hey, let's do some steelhead fishing again this year, I didn't argue one bit. You know, again, it's such a learning curve for me, and it's a ball. I mean, these fish are battlers. You don't just crank them in. No, they're scrappers. Oh, they're... man. It's um, the same strain. The same strain, okay. And this is a, uh, oh, it's perfect, your spinner fell out. Oh. That doesn't get any easier no. than that. Nice one happens like that, fish. And now she's starting to resort back to her lake colors, so she'll get more, more and more silver. Like that, huh? Yep, they'll lose a lot of that color, I and they'll the get nut. more in just a chrome color pattern. Beautiful fish. There's no doubt about that. But so hey, and back to the fishing part. Back to the fishing you're part. You're hooked up. You've I been said, on me all morning. You're like, yeah, you, you want to cast? cast? You like, no, cast? it's more fish. Well, before fish. I was on you because my hands were getting cold, and I figured oh, if that, I gave no, you a rod, I'd be yeah. good for a little bit, you know. Well, awesome. But it's cool. Hey, welcome to spring, Hunter Flanders. I was just about to say, man, something it's about it. warmed up. Yeah, it's nice definitely. out for yeah. sure. Been game on since we came back. Nice fish. Yeah, really cool. nice yeah. fish. You probably got the biggest fish of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a nice fish. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Beautiful fish. First trout of the year for me. And probably be the last, honestly. Really? Well, well I would never you're say back. the last. You're back. <laughs> He had to take a little break, warm up his hands and the bibs. Yep. Beautiful job. Awesome. Thanks, man. That's what it's all about, man. Very Enjoying cool. Enjoying the outdoors. You betcha. Life is good. Oh, there. People, yes. you got to start understanding that a little bit more. Life is very good. Goes by fast. Enjoy it while you're here. It's gone. Wow. That is awesome. I love the way they whack that, too. Persistence, persistence, persistence. Oh, that's a nice one too. Walk, walk towards me anyway. You got it, buddy. Oh, 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 you want to hold that nice one up, man. Jeff? Yeah, for sure. Gotta love it. Yeah, for sure. Decent oh. little winter brown. Let's let that one go. Got it. Back in the she gone. She gone. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, man, for sure. No, it's awesome. You know, we caught fish literally on everything today. The last one, you know, we were talking about switching up to, you know, just the bag and the plain hook. It was definitely one of those days where, like, a little bit of everything. These fish that are here that have been here for a while. There's not a lot of new fish in the system. So it was like, throw a rig for a while, get a bite or two, change it up, give them something different. But it's like you couldn't sit there with the same. Well, you threw the spinner all day. I did. I and, stuck and with and that you, because yep. I'm not a real good on with the floats, you know, and you guys are like experts on that floats. And I saw how tough the bite was today. So I figured, you know, probably the easiest and most consistent way for a guy like me that doesn't have, I'm not real good at mending the line, you know, and keeping everything perfect. So I, I thought to myself, the easiest way is no doubt to stay with the spinner. But I'll tell you what, you, you grinded. Hey, let's tell everybody how they can get a hold of you, you steelhead gurus. Yeah, for sure. Awesome guy, yeah. Um, so I'm Blue Ribbon Outdoors, blueribbonoutdoors.com, Blue Ribbon Outdoors on Facebook. Um, I run these kind of trips March, April, um, a little bit for salmon in September too in the rivers. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm fishing like the southern, you know, southeast Wisconsin. And then if you want to fish up in more central and northern Wisconsin on the trips, Jeff's your man. Yeah, right on. WDH Guide Service, uh, WisconsinDuckHunts.com, WisconsinFishingGuide.com, Jeff Vandermortel, Facebook, social media. Hey everybody, make sure you check out all of our social media and for sure check out our podcast. Every Tuesday, we eat, fish eat. Awesome topics, we get great guests on there, but it's a true blue American 
podcast. We love this country, always will. Don't forget, you're living in the greatest country in the world still. And no doubt, it is a great day to be alive. We'll see you next week. Hey, I'll tell you what, Austin, you are the winner of the fishing contest today between you and Jeff Vandermortel. And what you get is a brand new charred deep Ooh. fryer. We're going to get her greasy. Hey, dude, you got to do me a favor before you jump in your truck. <coughs> yeah, yeah. After that? touching that rat, you got to please wipe your hands off at least. Oh. You know what? It's never good to okay. grab a rat, you know, but I mean, at least wipe your hands off before you, you get in your truck. But at least it was like dead and rotting. Yeah, so. dead, yeah. yeah. it only had like a little bit of fur left on yeah, it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at Look at The rat is coming off on the towel. So I got to ask you before, when the camera is off, any, any reason you were playing with that dead rat? Well, it's when you were a kid and you were walking around on the road and you saw like a dead animal. He picked it up. You wanted to touch it, right? right? Yeah, I did. So I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, dead rat. I picked it up. And then Hunter was like, why are you holding a dead rat? And I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good point. Why am I holding That's a, good a question. dead rat? So I, that was it. I'd rather have you hold up that nice brown one. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's probably safer. <laughs> what are you doing? I Last time I saw somebody do that, it was a dog. Dude, I fell, on, I fell on the stream. Right? He touched that rat and got worms. <laughs> That's how my dog cleans his hiney. His hiney? Hold on to yours. We're going to the next spot. <laughs>